still recording. I cracked the lens though. Beautiful. Ow! Let go. Let go of my finger. Check it out. Another one. And this one's got an engine in it. Oh, he's trying to go in the mangroves. I still got a Christmas tree up and we're halfway through January. Don't make fun of me, okay? I just haven't got around to it. But in this episode, we done gonna use one of these things. It's an aerator. And the reason I'm holding this is because I made a YouTube short yesterday asking you guys, do you wanna see me get some live shrimp and go fish the mangroves? Or do you wanna see me get a bloody bait and do shark fishing off the John boat? And a majority of you said the shrimp. So now I got an aerator and I'm gonna go pick me up some shrimp. My rover has been in the shop for like four or five days now. It was supposed to be done last week, but they keep finding more issues with it. So I officially don't have a car, but I do have an electric bike. I'm gonna take the electric bike. We're gonna go get some live shrimp. I hope I don't crash. Got my bucket and my aerator. Now we got about a two mile drive. Still recording. I cracked the lens though. Quick message from Corporate Heiko. You need a premium shave and you need a premium blade. This is Harry's. They make all their blades in their own factory in Germany. And you know, I'm German and I know Germans got quality stuff. And everything in this bag can be all yours for only $5. Bam! Look at those blades. Ooh. This handle right here uses recycled materials. It looks good, feels good, got some weight to it. We already know that Harry's makes really good blades. The crazy thing is that it's just $5 and there's more. What else we got in here? We got ourselves a case to put it in. Keep your razor fresh. And last but not least, our very favorite part, the shaving cream. Is it just me or do I love the smell of shaving cream? Oh my God. Why am I doing this? It feels so good. I wasn't even planning on shaving. I got myself in a predicament. That was not part of the script. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. All right, I got it off. It smells really good. I had to keep my woman off me. She came in there, she's like, damn. She said, you smelling good. I said, I'm filming something. Not right now. The best five bucks you'll ever spend. If you wanna go get yourself this package, I'll leave a link in the video description below. I'll put the link right here. If you wanna get this Harry's special offer from the South Florida Fishing Channel. Big thank you, Harry for sponsoring this video and now back to fishing damn this is a brand new gopro well i just dropped my brand new gopro right on the pavement Coming. I don't know how to. That's pretty heavy. Home sweet home. Hey, buddy. You want a shrimp? Come here. Here. You gonna eat it? Nope. It's your lucky day, buddy. For now. I'm bringing two rods. They're pretty light action rods. This is a Pen 4000, the Conflict 2. This rod, I have braid going to like three feet of 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. You could use any leader, mono works. And then to a two aught live bait hook, this one right here. On the other rod, we got braid going to our popping cork. This right here, two or three feet of fluorocarbon leader going to our four aught circle hook those guys right there if you don't want to tie your own leaders we also offer the circle hook and the live bait hook already rigged with leader and swivels these are called our freeliner rigs all these things i'm gonna link in the video description below if you want to check them out let's load the john boat and go fishing special delivery this is our camera bag that's our cooler. Got a water, some snapper to eat, and a couple of beers. Safety bag, tackle bag, chum net. And then of course our trolling motor battery, which is a beast. 
Yeah, baby. Got our fishing poles. That's the most important part. Or is it the beer? I'll let that one up to you guys. Leave a comment. What's more important, the poles or the beer? I think we all know it's it's the fishing poles. I'm going to bring my net just in case I see some live bait, even though we got plenty of shrimp. You know what I do have? I put a pinfish trap out two days ago. Maybe I got some live bait in there. Oh, what we got in here? Oh, there's a bunch of pinfish. Should I grab a couple? Oh, wow. That guy is stuck in the door. Oh, these are Maharas, actually. Yeah, those are Maharas. I'm going to bring two of these. No, I'll bring three of them. And I'll bring two blue claws. Hey, this blue claw will not let go of the fish. I tried pulling him out, but he won't let me pull him out. He's like, I ain't going to let you... Look, he ain't letting go. I'm about to grab your friend, pal. Oh, there he is. Look at that. There's the other one. Boat is untied. We can push her in. There we go. Now the question is, will she fire up? If I had to put money on it, I would say yes, she will. I believe in you, baby. Don't let me down. Don't make me look bad. Let's get out of here. Yeehaw! All right, deploying the anchor. All right, boys. The tide looks good. It's not that low. Last couple times I came out here, the flats were just so low, but it looks pretty good today. I'm leaving my Evinrude motor in the back. I'm leaving it trimmed down. A lot of you guys in the comments said that it'll make the boat more stable. It'll be like a rudder back there. Before I was trimming it up, I got a good feeling about today. You know, the last two videos, we didn't catch that many fish, if, if any, in one of them. <coughs> today, we got the live shrimp. We'll put one bait out on the popper, on the float. That one, I'll just kind of leave alone, let it float. And then I'll have one shrimp on just the circle hook that I'll cast under these mangrove roots. Hopefully catch a big old fish. There's a couple barracuda in there, right in that nook. That's not what we're after today. Look at this water, how beautiful it is. And you got the reflection of the clouds. Whoo, man. I almost feel like I'm in a dream right now. So my strategy right now is I'm just kind of idling along these mangrove roots. And when I see a big mangrove snapper, preferably like three or four of them in a group under some roots, I'll just like go off to the side a bit. I'll put down my pole anchor and uh, then I'll just chuck some pilchards right into those mangroves. So I did just see some mangrove snapper over there and some pilchards, but the pilchards were very small, not worth cast netting. And the mangrove snapper was only, uh, it wasn't huge. We'll keep looking. If there was two people on my John boat, I would have the person in the back casting a lure or a live shrimp into all these roots right here. That is a good eating size blue claw right there. I gotta bring my blue claw traps. Oh my God. The possibilities out here are endless. I am, I need a, <laughs> yeah, boy. Like I was saying, I would have someone off the back casting. You might get lucky, you might catch a fish, but if I tried casting right now and driving the boat, I would crash 100%. So I'm just gonna focus on looking for fish and enjoying this ice cold beverage. Whatever your drink of choice might be, whether it's a cold Coke, maybe an orange Fanta, woo, or maybe just a cold beer. Cheers. I'm getting myself into some pretty tight nooks and crannies out here, trying to find that fishy. This might be a dead end. It's nice and cool in here. Reverse. This is what I love about the John boat. I can just squeeze this sucker wherever I want. If there's an inch of water on the flats, I can push it over it. I got that Fasco super slick epoxy coat on, coating on the bottom. So it literally just, if it's on a wet surface, it'll slide over it. Ooh, look at that nurse shark. That's a big boy. I was looking along those mangroves over there, but I got this weird feeling that there is a nice fish on that island right there. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna put my chum bag out and I'm gonna toss some shrimp out. Hopefully I can get like inside that island. Hmm, I feel good about this spot. I don't see any fish though. Birds, pelicans. Oh, the pelicans were sleeping in the trees. Let me figure out a good spot here. Let's see if I see any fish first. Wow, it is beautiful in here. Lots of logs on the bottom. 
a lot of habitat where there could be snapper. I just don't see any. I'm gonna anchor like right here. Okay, I think this is good. That's some hard ass bottom. I need to find something soft. Perfect. I got it tied off. Ooh, I like this. So the chum is gonna drift. The current's going this way because we got an incoming tide. So the chum's gonna go right into those mangroves and hopefully pull out all those fat, juicy snapper my way. There's the chum. Bring me the snapper. I want a fat, juicy one. Ooh, that's a fat, juicy one. I'm gonna hook them right through the tail. Just like that on the circle hook. We got our popping cork, which pretty much is gonna use as a bobber. Chuck him back. And I'll put this rod down, <laughs> which I'm kind of worried about. I feel like if I catch a fish, it's gonna pull my rod in the water. Oh, some, some just pulled the cork underwater. Oh, wait, I got a fish. I got a fish. What is that? <gasps> no, it got off. It got off and destroyed my shrimp. Well, that didn't take very long. <laughs> Two watt live bait hook. Grab yourself a live bait. Some people hook them through the head. You can try different things, but uh, I'm just gonna hook him right through the tail. Just like that. When I drove in there and looked around, I didn't see any fish. And now all of a sudden it's I'm getting nibbles. I'm fishing two poles like a boss. I got that one sitting there. Probably gonna get pulled in by a fish. I got this one in my hand. Bring it on, I'm ready. Oh, wait, I just got a hit on this one. The popping cork is nice because it gives me a visual reference if I got a fish on or not. They bit my shrimp in half again. What could be doing that? Naughty little creatures. Probably a little barracuda or something. Your destiny is to catch me a fish. Fight bravely out there, soldier. Oh. Something's messing with it. Swallow the sucker. Give him a good swallow. If it was a big fish, it would swallow him whole. It's just getting some nibbles here. Oh, oh, I had. Oh, it cut my line cleanly. I think that was either a shark or a barracuda. Might have to move spots. I'm gonna try my sea trout method with this shrimp. The shrimp on the popping cork. Instead of just letting it float, I'm gonna cast it real far. Yeah, as far as I can. And then. You just give it a pop real slow, give it a pop real slow, pop. And I'm hoping that maybe they just want a little bit of commotion to turn them on. How can you resist such a juicy little shrimp? Oh, something just ate them. Oh, bad news. There's like four little baby barracudas chasing my shrimp. He's literally right down there. He's got my shrimp in his mouth. He's chewing on it. He's such a small barracuda. I don't even think that hook will fit in his mouth. We're gonna move spots. New rule for myself. If I'm gonna anchor somewhere and chum, I gotta at least see a little sign of snapper. I gotta see like a little snapper. Oh, there's a shark right there. You see him? See that guy? You think you can eat all my shrimp without my permission? I'm gonna go back to the mangrove line here. When I see a couple mangroves, we're stopping and we're gonna catch them. No more lalagagging. There's that refugee boat that I boarded on my last video. There's some interesting stuff on there. Definitely check out my last video if you haven't watched it. I uh, climb up onto that thing. I actually see another refugee boat all the way over there in the bushes. I think I'm gonna go check it out. Wow, check it out. Oh, this one's still got the engine in it. Yeah. Oh, this one is way cooler than the other one. Couple of boots in there. Honestly, I really want to see if, oh, there's still some fuel in there. I wonder if we could fire it up. Oh, look at the batteries. Two big batteries down there. Oh, they got life jackets. Those look Coast Guard approved too. That's pretty, pretty nice. It smells like tar. Okay, so that's the batteries. Where's the starter on this thing? That looks like the clutch, that handle. 
It's got another aluminum, like aluminum wall. It looks like wherever they put the screws in, they put some like 4200, some kind of cock. The frame of the boat is built in wood. Wood platforms on the top, like a little makeshift sail. Look at this paddle. I mean, this is a beast of a paddle. Oh, it's huge. Dude, look how big it is. It's so heavy. There's some rubber boots down there. And look at the transom of the boat. It's just, looks like a piece of plywood, aluminum on the outside. We got our rudder here. So that's the rudder. Look at that engine, boys. And there's a box of spare parts right there. A little rusty, but might get the job done. Look how crazy this is. This is probably how it cools the engine. We got these like cooling grates. There's the intake going into here. And then that goes there and into the engine. Look at that pipe. Oh, oh man. Another crazy discovery out here. These things wash up like every other day. There's another one washing up here in the Florida Keys. I wish I had more of a story on uh, what happened, who came over, what happened. I want to know these things. I'm interested. We only got about an hour of sunlight left, so I better get to fishing if I want to do a little, uh, if I want to catch me a snapper. This might be one of the creepiest things I have ever seen in my life. It's a sweater but it's like standing up like a human. What the? F I literally thought that were, there was a person standing here as I went by. I kind of jumped for a second. I was like, oh Lord, don't let this be it for me. I can't believe I touched that creepy old thing. That better not have been the sweater of someone that passed away. I don't need to be haunted right now. That's the last thing I need. We're back to what we were originally doing, which is driving along the mangroves. I'm looking. I got my eyeballs peeled. And when I see some snapper under these mangrove roots, we're going to anchor. And then we're actually going to catch a fish. Mark my words. That's why it says catch and cook in the title of this video. Fish on. Everybody. Back street. Back. All right. I just saw a nice snapper under those roots right there i'm gonna see how the drift is going and then i'm gonna line us up perfectly so a little bit of chum goes up into those mangrove roots and then we'll chuck a little shrimp in there dinner served i need to get some cleats on this boat so i could just cleat off i'm always like tying into random things like my trolling motor i got nowhere to cleat ropes ropes off to looks like we're holding there is my mangrove spot i kind of wish we were anchored over there Oh uh, yeah, 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 this is much better. Okay, this is perfect. Yes, that little root right there is where I saw the snapper. We're gonna, oh, this is perfect. Let's put that chum out. All right, no mercy, guys. I'm hungry. When Heiko is a hungry hippo, it's not funny anymore. I'm gonna throw one shrimp in for good luck. Get him a little excited, you know. Maybe he'll live, probably not. Yeah. Okay. Good shrimp, let them know. There's no hooks, there's no strings attached. They eat that shrimp and their confidence goes through the roof, through the roof. When the one with the hook in it comes by, they don't even think twice. <laughs> oh, I'm on, I'm on. No! Okay, 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 okay. They're fired up, they're fired up. Oh, he ate it. I'm on. <gasps> no! What happened? Oh, he took it right off the hook. I'm gonna change my strategy up. This time I'm gonna free spool it, which means I just leave my spool open so line can go out. So first I'll chuck. Oh, that was a good cast. Okay, and now uh, uh, my spool's open. So if uh, snapper grabs it, he can, oh, oh, one grabbed it. Okay, I'm gonna let him swallow it. Let him swim with it a little bit. Let him swim with it. Okay, he swallowed it. Bam! Yes! I'm on. <gasps> it got off. Oh, okay. 
could be little barracudas if if they keep popping off like that but i saw a mangrove in there sometimes you got to get past the barracudas to get to the mangrove snapper oh they stole my shrimp again i might switch from a circle hook to a live bait hook but i'm not sure yet because i don't know what the problem is yet am i on oh no it took me into the roots broke me off broke me off i will not be defeated by some morsel that has the brain the size of a P, if that. I doubt it's even the size of a P. Ooh, should I try a Mahara? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Boys, I hooked it in its upper back. I got the uh, the bobber on here. We're gonna chuck him right in there. <gasps> if there's a big, hungry mangrove snapper in there and he sees that Mahara freaking out, I don't know if he's gonna eat it or not. <laughs> I think they like the shrimp more. Okay, I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna leave that fishing pole right there. I switched back from a circle hook to a two odd live bait hook. With a J hook, you can really set the hooks much harder on these fish. Yeah. Ooh, that went right into the mangroves. That's gonna get bit right away and now I can set the hook on them. Eat it, eat it, eat it. I dare you to eat that. Oh, here we go. Ugh. Yes, I'm on. What do we got here? What do we got? Mangrove snapper. Beautiful. Ow! 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 Ooh! Shit! 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 shit. Oh, he got my finger. Oh, where's my pliers? Ah! Little bastard! Woo! Okay, I gotta move my rod. I gotta move my rod. Oh, oh. Fuck! Let go! Let go of my finger! Let go! Huh. Oh my f Oh my f Okay, okay, I got my pliers. Ah. Damn. Damn, I didn't realize how hard those things could bite. All right, beautiful. <laughs> get out, yeah, get, get that thing out of here. Whew. Oh, he wasn't big enough anyways to eat. If he was big enough to eat, <laughs> oh, he would not have been swimming around right now. I got an idea. I'm gonna use a blue claw. And I'm not doing this because I wanna get bit again. Oh, he's trying to bite me. I got him. There we go. Sorry, bud. Ripped his, cl his claw off. There's freaking gunshots going off. What the hell? Now we got ourselves a blue claw. How'd the old saying go? Ain't no laws with the claws. Everyone drank them white claws. I'm so, I, I don't drink white claws. I did for a little bit, but I am over those things. New chapter of life, please. All right, I'm gonna let that blue claw sit back there. And I'm gonna go back to using a shrimp. Freaking gunshots. Ooh, that's a big shrimp. One big shrimp for the cause. Going in. I just had a really good hit and it took my shrimp. You will not get away with that. Oh, perfect cast. Pat on the back, Heiko. That was a really good cast. Pat on the freaking back. Okay, this time I'm free spooling it. I wanna let him swallow it. I think he's got it. Something's got it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh, this is actually a good fish. This is a good fish. I got him out. I got him out. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, where's my net? Okay, it's up here. It's up here. Oh my God. The live bait hook, baby. They love it. They love it. They love it. They can't get enough of it. Yes. Oh shit, I just got salt water all over my nice camera down there. Woo! Oh my lord! Now that one you do not want to get your finger in. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. Oh. That is a good eating size. Beast. Okay, let's not get bit. You see those fangs? Those like sharp teeth right there? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Whoa! Oh, he wants to bite. Oh, dude, look at that. That is a nice fish. 
Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful fat snapper. I'm gonna cut his throat. Well, 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 looks like your boy Heiko caught a fish. <laughs> a nice one too, a fat, juicy, healthy one. And he was thick, colorful, beautiful. Shall we try for another one? I think so. So the key, what I'm finding here is the key really is to get the shrimp has to go like under the leaves of the mangroves. Like you gotta skip them like a, Boom. You like skip them under those mangrove roots because oh, I think all those big snapper, they like chill deep back in there and they wait for stuff to swim by and then they come out and eat it. So you got to kind of put it in front of them. Oh, oh, something got him. Something got him. Hey oh, what was that? Oh, my, my line got cut. Oh, that must have been a barracuda then. If it's a barracuda or a shark, they tend to uh, just cut your line like that. Yeah, clean cut, very clean cut. Ooh. I wonder if I should stay in this spot or try a different spot if the barracuda are here. Something's messing with it. Come on. Swallow it, baby. Swallow it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to set the hook right here. Three, two. Yes, I'm on. I got him. Yeah. Welcome to my ship, my friend. Uh, he's a little guy, so he gets to live. It's your lucky day, pal. This is the one time not being big enough will be a good thing for you. He still has the shrimp hanging out of his mouth. But uh, you know what? That's a well-deserved shrimp, buddy. I'm gonna let you take that shrimp home with you. He swam off with the shrimp in his mouth. I'm kind of surprised nothing's eating the blue crab. So I'm gonna... Oh no, he went right into the bush. Okay, there we go, perfect. I put him right into the mangroves. I'm curious if they're gonna eat him. That's a fat, chunky monkey. That's a whole dinner right there. This right here is a mangrove snapper that I caught the other day. And this is my German schnitzel snapper recipe. What you do is you fillet your snapper, then you take your fillet, you cover it in flour, then you dunk it in an egg wash and then you bread it with breadcrumbs and then you fry it or like I, I made them in a pan with uh, butter which that's basically how you make a schnitzel and then no schnitzel is complete without a lemon so you just you squeeze your lemon on it and just eat it mmm that is good fish on another fish on fish on fish on yeah what we got here we have another mangrove snapper. Whoa, <laughs> he almost got me. All right, I'm starting to figure this out a bit here. Keep playing with it, I'm gonna set that hook on you. Keep on playing with it, pal. Did he eat it? Oh, yeah, he's on. Oh, oh, this one feels good. Oh, ooh, a feisty one and, ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what's he doing? Come this way. Whoa. Yes, beautiful. He swallowed the hook and I was gonna throw him back, but he is legal size. They gotta be 12 inches. I'm gonna keep them. We're gonna keep them. We're gonna keep them. Two fish in the box. I am feeling very content right now. That's definitely enough for dinner. What we're gonna do now, we got about 30 minutes of light left. So I'm just gonna cruise along these mangroves back home, back to my dock. I do have the shrimp up here on deck with me, with my fishing pole right there. So if I do see another nice snapper, I'll just toss him a shrimp. I'm gonna look under these mangroves that we've just been casting at. Oh, there's some big mangroves down there. There's a big one. I'm gonna leave that spot alone though because you know what? I pulled two nice dinner fish off of there. I'm gonna let those guys chill. We got ourselves a couple of horseshoe crabs. And it looks like they're getting down and dirty if you know what I'm saying. They're traveling together. I've been seeing a lot of big snappers, but I haven't stopped yet to fish for them. This looks like a really good spot. Look at that overhang. There's definitely some big snapper up under there. This is one of the most relaxing things I've done in a while. Look at that water. This is so enjoyable. Some snapper right there. Small ones. Oh, that's a big mangrove. Do you guys see them? Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh there's like. 15 of them. Okay, what do we do? 
just a little more fishing. I put the pull anchor down. The current is kind of going this way. We got like a nice little channel going right through here. I see a nice, there's mangroves snapper right there. They're kind of like curious. They keep looking at me. I'm gonna put the chum out. See, look at the current. Look how fast that chum's going back. Big snapper. Oh, where's my shrimp? Where's my shrimp? This is the biggest shrimp that I have. My hook <laughs> it might almost be too small for him. He's a, that's a big fat shrimp. Oh, they took them. They took my shrimp. I'm getting bit by no seams. Luckily, this time I brought our new no seam spray. All natural. Gonna see if it works. Let's see if, if this will get the no seams to stop biting me. Okay, I've lathered myself. I'm gonna throw this shrimp back into the chum slick. Yeah, right back there. I wonder if there's any creatures sitting back there. Oh. I'm getting nibbles. I'm getting nibbles. Oh, I see them. They're chasing it. There's like 10 snappers staring at it. So good. Oh, I'm on. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is this? It's strong. That's probably a snapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo hoo hoo. Oh. Hey, he's a pretty good size actually. Damn. That's a keeper for sure. Oh, and he's snapping. <laughs> that is a chonky one. Look at all that meat, all that protein. Okay, I'm gonna get bit again. Wow, chonk monster. Yeah. You know what? I'm very hungry. My car is broke down, so I haven't been to the grocery store in a couple days. You know what? I'm a, I'm a bag a third one. I'm a bag them. Those no seams stopped biting me after I put that spray on. What a relief. Might as well throw one more shrimp back there. <laughs> oh, all the snappers go right for it. A tiny snapper just ate my shrimp. <laughs> I'm watching him eat it. So funny. He's so small. He, he didn't even bite it in half. He just kind of like held it in his mouth. Ooh, that's a big snapper right there. Oh, oh, that snapper just ate my hook. Oh! 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 He's trying to go in the mangroves. Oh! I was too focused on the camera and driving the boat. Oh, I shouldn't have let him pull that hook. That was my bad. He was a good size too. That was a, he would have gone in the box. We would have had four fish. Whew, that was exciting. I could keep fishing, but I kind of want to end it on a high note. And that battle right there was kind of a high note. Like the water was so clear. I saw him eat it. I set the hook, we battled. That was a good, like everything, everything was good there. I got to start thinking about how I want to cook these snapper up. Successful ending, but hey, she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh my god. I've had the fish on ice overnight. I was on YouTube this morning and I was just looking up some fish recipes and I found this one recipe from Gordon Ramsay and what he does. is he poaches the fish. Have you ever heard anything like that before? Poached snapper. So. Ba-boom, look at that fine dining piece of snapper right there. <whistles> Looking good. Come here. Oh, yeah. Right here. Poach 
salmon. Wait, I got <laughs> Wait, this is not a salmon. Oh, redo. Poached snapper. There we go. Here's three of the fillets. No bones, no nothing. Just nice, clean snapper fillets. The rest of the fillets I put in this bag. Probably eat those for dinner. But it's lunchtime, and we're doing it Gordon Ramsay style. To poach the fish, he wraps them into these pouches made out of like cling wrap, clear wrap. So we're gonna make a pouch, and then we're gonna add olive oil, salt, and basil. And Dan gave me a basil plant like a month ago, and I built a garden, and it's almost doubled in size. It has doubled in size. It's almost tripled in size. Something's been eating them, look, you see that? Something's been eating my basil. What could that be? Ooh, baby, look at all that basil. Let's make one of these pouches. I suck at using cling wrap. It usually just sticks to myself and balls up and I ruin the whole thing. I'm gonna try to be careful. Ooh, okay, that's the carefulest I've ever done been with some cling wrap. Take our fish, lay it on the cling wrap, I think the key to good cling wrap is to cut it, maybe? Oh, kind of work. All right, this is the best I've ever had it with cling wrap. We'll take, take a pinch of Himalayan pink salt, or I guess it really doesn't, whatever salt you got. Nice and salty. Then we got some olive oil. Give it a drizzle. Drizzle, drizzle. And then we'll lay a couple of fat, Juicy uh, basil leaves on there. And now we wrap it real tight. Okay, there we go, a basil fish pouch. I'll make two more of those. I'm gonna add some of this garlic and onion, red, white, and blue outdoors seasoning to one of our pouches, just to see. I'm curious how that'll be. You can support the channel and get yourself some of our seasonings at SouthFloridaFishingChannel.com. Don't you forget. I'm just happy you're watching. It feels a little questionable <laughs> dropping these cling wrap pouches into uh, boiling or should I say simmering water. Never done this before so uh, let's see what happens. Do they float or do they sink? Yeah, they float. I'm not gonna have it at a rolling boil, but I'll have it at like a simmer. I want it to simmer a little bit more than that. Gordon Ramsay said 10 to 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. It smells good. They look done, but I, I can't tell if they're falling apart or not. Hold on a sec. And I'm not sure the best way to take them out, but I, maybe like this, just drop them down. I'm just gonna cut the cellophane wrap open. I'm just gonna dump it all on this plate, like bop. There we go. Woo! A spinach covered piece of snap poached snapper covered in uh wait wait it's not basil not spinach why am i saying spinach i got my words all mixed up today Ooh wee let's give it a try the fish is flaky which is, i'm just gonna go in ham one big bite with a piece of basil i could have got away with boiling it probably for like 10 minutes. It's cooked like thoroughly. I don't want to say it's overcooked, but the flavors are so fresh. Part of me wants to say this might be the best snapper I've ever made. You got to try this recipe. I never would have thought making little pouches and boiling them in water. That's, it sounds weird to me, but damn. It's so simple. I would believe that having fresh basil makes a big difference too, because that basil mmm it really just wow that's one pouch down the hatch i'm gonna finish the other two hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys learned something another big shout out to harry's for sponsoring this video if you want to get that bag for five dollars the video or the link will be in the video description below and i'll see you guys on the very next fishing video cheers mm -hmm.